I'm out here getting my car ready for winter because according to the weather service, we're going to get snow tonight. And it could be one to three inches accumulating and it's the last day of October. So you probably can't see it. There's little tiny dandruff size <laughs> snowflakes coming down, but we're expecting a lot more. So I want to make sure that I have my car kit winterized, right? Do I have the supplies I need for winter? Earlier this year, right, there was that huge, huge pileup on the expressway where people ended up being stranded for almost 24 hours in Virginia. And a lot of people weren't that prepared to have what they needed in their car. So it is important that you check what you have in your vehicle kit and winterize it. Now, one of the things you want to do is just inspect your car. How are your tire treads? Well, mine is very good because I just spent this month a thousand dollars getting four new tires. So it's great, but always do the penny test and make sure you have the tread you need. Bare tires are really, really dangerous in winter. Make sure also that your pressure for your tires is correct for your car, for your tire, because for every 10 degree drop in temperature, it can lower your PSI by one or two. So make sure you have a good tire gauge. I like this one because I think this tire gauge is very easy to read and it doesn't take any batteries. Really important to have a clean windshield so you have visibility in the winter. You want to have it completely free of any ice or snow. So your windshield wipers, very, very important. And this year I spent more than usual on my windshield wipers. I have the Bosch Icon wipers, which were $50 for two, but because of their construction, they're supposed to last 40% longer and be better for not getting stuck with snow and ice in between. So you don't have to, in addition to cleaning your windshield, clean your windshield wipers too. So I hope they live up to the hype. Now, of course, you want to check, make sure that your heater works inside and does your heater for your front window and for your rear window work. Really, really important if you get in a blizzard. And always, no matter what the weather is, don't let your gas tank get down below a half full. Now, any of the items I've talked about, I have available here on a checklist so you can see if you have everything you need in your kit. And I'll explain how you can get that at the end of the video. But before we can get in to our winter items needed, you have to have a good general kit. So I'm quickly going to go through the items that I keep in my kit and I think you should keep in your general car kit. First, always check and make sure your car manual is where it should be because this has a lot of different information that could be important if you have a breakdown. And I remember once, I think we were using my husband's car, and my husband wasn't with me, and I had battery problems. And so lift right the hood, and the battery wasn't under the front hood, and it's like, where is the battery? Well, because there is a manual, I was able to find it under the back seat. Who would have thought? Those foreign cars, you know. So, always make sure you have your car manual where you can get it when you need it. Second up, a good first aid kit. Now, you can buy a first aid kit like this, or I prefer to have a homemade kit. This is mine. It has, even back here, a little pack, and it has first aid instructions if something would happen. We have a tourniquet right on the outside, scissors on the outside, and a lot of good stuff inside. And if you're interested, I have a video on it. But always good to have at least a small first aid kit in your car. Something else you want to think about for safety is do you have a seat belt cutter and a window breaker handy that you can reach if something would happen. 
Uh, I love this little Rescue Me tool. I keep it right on my visor so I can easily grab it. And you might want to have one of these also on the passenger side for their safety. Now something else, it's very old school, but you should have maps. Something could happen. Your cell phone might not work. Your GPS might not work. What do you do? You gotta have maps. And I have maps of my city, my county, my state, and even a U.S. atlas. So make sure you have maps just in case something happens that you can refer to. Well, what happens if your cell phone is dead? You forgot your charging cable, you can't charge it. I think it's always a good idea to have a cell phone charger in your car. I like this one. I just ordered it in yellow. Uh, it is about the size of a credit card. It's pretty thin and it has a charging cable for either iPhones or the other. I'm the other. My kids are iPhones. So it's really nice. It will give you just about a complete charge on that little pack. So it's a great thing that you can easily carry in your car. And of course, think about a flashlight. Well, you know, I have a bunch of Olight flashlights. I do like flashlights, but I like one like this here for the car because it's magnetic. It also has a hook if you would want to hang it. So if you need to go under your hood to do repairs, you can just clip it and you have light. I think that is great. And it even swivels 360 degrees and it is battery operated. I suggest you don't use the USB charged flashlights for your emergency kit. Have the ones where you have batteries and take long extra batteries. Now talking about the car not starting, you want to have a good set of jumper cables. I really like these. They are heavy duty and they even come in their own carrying case and they are 16 feet in length. And what happens if you do get stuck on the side of the road? Well, it is a good idea to wear a safety vest if you're out doing something on your car so people can see you. Uh, they're very inexpensive. Do not take up much room in your kit. And this little vest here has reflective tape, so it could save your life. And if your car is dead along the road, think about putting up some flares. These two flares are pretty inexpensive, come in their own kit, and will really increase the visibility of your car for others. Oh, and they operate on batteries. So again, make sure you have extra batteries in your kit. Talking about flat tires, you might want to keep a fix-a-flat in your emergency kit, but do remember it will freeze under 32 degrees. I do keep this kit here, I really like it. Um, it has both the tire inflator and the sealant in it. And they say that you can inflate your tire within 10 minutes and you can drive for 100 more miles before you need it repaired. So it's only a temporary repair, but it's a nice little kit to have in your emergency car kit. Well, if you do need repair, always good to have tools, right? And I like this Husky kit here. This uh, is the 45 piece stubby kit, but it's just a nice size. You can easily carry it. I really think this is a great car tool kit. Now, if you're doing car repairs, your hands can get really greasy, dirty, yucky. So you might want to clean them before you start driving again. And you could carry baby wipes, but I recommend these Grime Boss wipes. They really, really do the job. And I encourage you to have a tarp in your car. You might have to go underneath your car in mud and dirt or snow. So have a good heavy duty tarp. I like this one because it is a tarp but it also is an emergency reflective, not easy opening it all up here. <laughs> you see, 
yes it's an emergency reflective interior so that can come really in handy to keep somebody warm let's say you uh fall through the ice ice fishing are able to crawl back to your car which my brother did this will come in handy until you can get that car heater really really heating up your whole car and your body so think about having a tarp and in addition to your toolkit have some duct tape of course uh, i prefer the all-weather gorilla duct tape very very heavy duty tape and you want to have some electrical tape just in case you got to make some repairs under the hood right and i say have paracord also is that because i'm a prepper maybe but you never know when you have to tie on a bumper or do something else so not a bad idea to have some paracord too and i always carry a toe strap with me this rhino one is great um, very sturdy and it comes with a lifetime warranty now i don't think it's necessary to have food in your car um, but you might want to then i recommend these millennium bars because they have a five-year shelf life they don't taste too bad they're 400 calories for just this size bar and they are good in very very low temperatures and very very high temperatures so they can be kept in your car without spoiling so if you do want to carry some kind of food bar think about having the millennium bar and you might also want to carry some water in your car um, just remember that in winter where i live water can freeze in your car so i get a bottle of water but I open the cap, pour a little of it out, then put the cap on really securely. And that allows the water, if it expands because it freezes, the whole bottle doesn't burst. So that's how I carry emergency water. And you know, it just figures if your car is gonna break down, just watch it be in rotten, rainy weather. So it's always a good idea to have some rain pouches. And these are sturdier, and they're disposable and they come in a five pack now if you're doing car repairs your hands can get really greasy dirty yucky so you might want to clean them before you start driving again and you could carry baby wipes but i recommend these grime boss wipes they really really do the job and what happens if you run out of gas well if that happens it's good to have a spare gas can in your car this little can uh, holds two plus gallons and it's easy to pour which is really important so it could really come in handy if you do get trapped let's say on the expressway a long line ahead of you a long line behind you nothing moving snow everywhere it's good to be able to get some information so i recommend keeping a small radio perhaps in your glove compartment um, this little radio gets AM, FM, the NOAA, so channels so you can get weather alerts. It's solar powered. It also has a flashlight to it, a phone charger, and it will do a SOS alarm and a compass. So great idea for your emergency car kit. That's it for your general items. Now let me show you what I add to my general car kit for winter you know one of the realities of living in Michigan is if you park your car outside and it snows or it's icing you're gonna have a lot of scraping of your windshield to do before you can leave and to add to my problem I'm what I call vertically challenged uh, in my heyday I was five foot one and a half an inch and now I think I am under five foot one so for me, I have a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee to really reach all the way across is very difficult with a standard scraper. So I bought this on Amazon this year. It is an extendable snow brush. And let me show it to you a minute. 
looks like it's very well made. Um, you can even change this. It will rotate 360 degrees. Got a nice, if you were actually just washing your window, right? Um, but a really hefty brush. And then the neat thing here is if you press this down, yeah, it goes out even more. So it will actually extend 51 inches. And let me put this back. And then on the other end, a nice, nice sturdy scraper, which is needed if you've got ice. And it's got foam padding here. I think this is going to be great to use in the winter. So if you're vertically challenged like me, or you want a really heavy duty, extendable scraper brush, I think this is a great thing to have. And you may want to carry some antifreeze windshield fluid with you. Now I urge you to know your vehicle settings. Like I said, I have a Jeep Grand Cherokee and it has uh, what it calls select terrain. So it actually has a snow setting, which means it allows the power to be distributed between my front and my rear axles. So easier to drive in the snow. But you know what? You can still get stuck. And then what do you do? Well, I advise having some traction mats, or in my case, I have a traction board, and I can slip this under the tire, and then hopefully rock a little bit back and forth and get out. Now, you may also want to carry with you some non-clumping kitty litter, which is kind of the old-fashioned kitty litter, or sand, or in this case, I have a bag of de-icer. That can also help you if you get stuck. Oh, and let me give you a little tip. Maybe you don't have a traction mat or board, and you don't have any kitty litter or sand, but you're stuck. What do you do? Well, you can take your car mats out of your car, stick them under the tire, and that might just give you enough traction so you become unstuck. And you need a shovel, right? This can help you if you get stuck or if you need to clear the area from your exhaust pipe because it's got snow or dirt or mud. You have to be careful because if that is clogged up and you're using heat in your car while you're stuck there, you could die from carbon monoxide poisoning. So always open your window, just a little crack at least, to be safe. If you are using your car heater when you're stuck, you should only run it for five to 10 minutes an hour. Talking about warmth, I highly encourage you to have some kind of blanket. This is a fleece blanket featuring the lions, which are doing well this year. Hallelujah. Uh, this is just a nice size, will keep you warm. You might want a bigger blanket. And there are actually heated blankets that will go into your lighter port. And that can keep you warm. And to keep warm, if you were stuck for an extended period of time, you might actually want, this is a sleeping bag. That can come in really handy. or I have uh, many of these little emergency bivvies, which are a sleeping bag with kind of the emergency blanket interior to keep you warm. But this is great in addition to your blanket. One of the things I highly recommend in your winter kit is to keep some warm clothing. I have this Sea to Summit bag and I keep a winter coat in it. I don't know if you can see, it says winter coat, gloves, and do you say it, shemag? You know, you can wrap that scarf around your head, around your neck to keep warm. And I have another one of these that has hiking boots and some other things to wear. So, here in Michigan, and probably in other places too, you know, we think, hey, we're going from our heated house into our heated car, into a heated grocery store. And I'm only gonna pick up one thing. 
So I'm just gonna grab the keys, run out, get in my car. Why put on a coat? Why put on boots? You know, I don't need a hat. I don't need gloves. It's only 10 minutes to the store. And then something happens. Well, that's when you can be glad that you can stay warm because you packed a good winter coat, gloves, and hat, and hopefully boots too. Now I've seen online, um, it's recommended to get like a coffee can and have emergency candles and you can put those in and light them and that will keep you warmer. I don't do that, but you might want to consider that. Now, you might also want to consider some hand warmers. And you know, you can buy those kind that come in a package and you activate them and then they're disposable after so long. And they can help, but if it's really cold, I find they don't help nearly as much as the old fashioned Zippo hand warmers. Let me show you here. They also have hand warmers now that have a USB charge. But my thing about that is if you're keeping it in the car, um, cold weather can take down a charge a lot faster and you might find out that when you need it, they aren't working. So I prefer the Zippo hand warmers. They really work well and my brothers used to swear by them for deer hunting. One last thing that I put in my kit is, well, I have yak tracks. You know those, they go on your boots, whatever. I keep those in the house though. I don't keep them in the car. They are great when I have to go out on an icy day and do the chickens and rabbits because it is a bit of a walk from our house to the outbuilding where they are. So I keep them in the house, not in the car. But what I am going to keep in the car, and I just got these this year, is this, the quick tracks what do they call it quick tracks okay and it's just like this little rubber right here it goes on your boot see it has a little traction here and here so it goes on your toe and it can help you if it is icy and I thought this was a great thing to have in the car because I can quickly put it on. Sometimes the yak tracks are kind of a pain to put on, to be honest. But this, very often, like I said, I go out with my normal shoes, don't have winter traction. I can put this on and this can be very helpful. Well, I hope you found this helpful and that you too are looking over your car kit and winterizing it how you need to. And if you're interested, I have a link down below where you can download this full PDF. And it includes a little checklist. So you can check it off if you have it in your kit. And then it has an item and a suggestion if you don't have the item on Amazon. Make sure you do really have a good first aid kit. This is an hour after I got done making the video. Winter is on its way.